Thank you. Um, well, it's my honor to have a chance to give a talk at this workshop. Uh, but I should say I'm s sort of sorry uh, because my work is not complete. It's still in progress. And well, homogeneous Boltzmann equations is the equation for uh, gas dynamics. Well, some of you may know uh, about this equation here. So the uh, time derivative of density is equal to uh, QFF, so-called collision term, and here initial value. So to explain about this collision term briefly, uh, this is quite hard. Well, let's review so-called collision variables. So if V and V star and V prime, V star prime denote the velocities of two colliding uh, molecules immediately before and after collisions, respectively, then due to uh, local conservation laws of momentum and kinetic energy, uh, they are subject to these rules. And B plus B star is here, and then uh, their uh, energy, local energy, is the same. Okay. <laughs> and this relationship can be uh, solved in terms of this parameter. Well, if you set sigma as uh, this unit vector, uh, then you can express B prime and B star prime. In other words, post-collisional velocity variables in terms of this uh, uh, parameter sigma here. And then the uh, collision operator. Well, there are actually two two definitions, as far as I know. Well, the first one given by uh, Boltzmann, uh, this is point-wise version. So suppose uh, we write F prime as F B prime T, F star prime as F B star prime T, and so on. And this sigma stands for the area measure on, uh, on the unit sphere. Then this collision uh, operator, in a point-wise version uh, is given by this formula here. So integration of V and then times this uh, F prime F star prime minus F F star, this sigma dB star. And here, uh, P represents a physical model of molecular interactions and it's a non-negative measure of function depending only on uh, its relative velocities, the size, and the scalar product sigma dot b minus b star. And so, well, we, uh, I, I used to point out that this uh, point-wise version is due to Boltzmann, and as, I, as we shall see below, there is yet another way of understanding it due to uh, J. Maxwell much before uh, Boltzmann here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, well, to uh, uh, do some uh, sort of research, we need uh, some uh, another parameterization of B prime and B star prime. And uh, so, well, as usual, we define the so-called deviation angle theta between the sigma and k here. k is the vector b minus b star points out, and then uh, sigma is b prime minus b star prime, actually. So the angle is defined in this way. And so if you see this geometrically, then uh, as this angle theta ranges over or uh, between 0 and pi, this unisphere decomposes into the union of parallel surfaces, like this, where sigma sub theta is the set of all points of sigma in the unisphere, whose angle between k is uh, 
uh, is theta here, right? So if you look at the uh, uh, this relationship, relationship uh, a little bit carefully, then on the elementary calculus it shows that uh, this is belongs to this parallel surface if and only if sigma is uh, given by here, cosine theta k plus sine theta omega, where omega is belongs to uh, k pop in a section s to the n minus 1. <coughs> k pop denotes the uh, hyperplane orthogonal to k. So geometrically, uh, what I mean is that, okay, here is some, some nice picture. <laughs> Because of uh, local conservation laws, B, B star, and B prime, B star prime, they all form this uh, rectangular uh, uh, configuration. And then here, uh, with this center, uh, if you make this uh, unisphere here, oops, and then uh, where the unisphere points uh, the, 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 the k, direc uh, k direction here, then something like this. Here is angle theta, and sigma is here, and the u is here. So that we have a decomposition sigma in terms of uh, uh, cosine of theta of u, and then sine theta of k here. And one more picture. OK. So well, here is this is unisphere with uh, k points out the, uh, the um, well, anyway, this direction here. And then uh, this, uh, you make angle theta here with K. And then this is parallel surface, sigma theta here. And then so if sigma lies on this uh, parallel surface, then it's, it's quite easy to see that this is uh, sum of these two vectors here. And exactly what that's what I mean here. So let's go backward. And then here. That. Okay. And in terms of this uh, new parameter, namely omega and k, uh, the uh, surface area measure becomes, uh, because of this Jacobian factor, sine to the n minus 2 theta, d omega d theta, where d omega stands for the usual area measure on, on the lower dimensional unisphere, one, one dimensional less. And then inserting uh, our relationship and simplifying algebra, we will obtain another parameterization, which is given by that. Here b prime is b plus this sine theta over 2 is a cosine theta over 2 omega minus sine theta over 2 k. The star prime is that, well, we have the same actually, but only the uh, change of sign. And then here is b and b star prime. And that's equivalent. This is the most important uh, parameterizations. Right. So, well, well, there are many types of collisional uh, corners. Not many types, but <laughs> well, most people are interested in this type of uh, corners here. So, corner is given by some uh, tensorial product of uh, this function of b minus b star the uh, uh, modulus times some function of uh, uh, angular things, cosine theta here, b. And here, here part, the, uh, this, this, this portion is called so-called kinetic part. And this is a function satisfying, uh, well, usually. But here, we're interested in between, uh, it's a non-negative things, but uh, essentially, b minus b start to the gamma power where gamma is some, uh, some number between minus uh, dimension n and then uh, zero. Well, actually, you can, you can go for uh, up to 1. 
so-called hard spear model, but uh, because they are uh, somehow uh, known, uh, I'm just to restrict our attention here, uh, so-called uh, soft, soft potential of Maxwellian here. And then the uh, angular part is a, a non-negative function ha having support what well, we could assume in general between zero and pi over two and satisfying here. Uh, B, uh, this, this thing is cosine theta and then one minus cosine theta this sigma. So in terms of, in terms of our new uh, parameterizations, uh, you, can, you can change sigma dot k as cosine theta and then uh, you have a Jacobian factor sine n minus two theta d theta, and then this one uh, because it's one minus cosine theta, it that becomes sine squared theta over two, and because the, they are all uh, constant over a uh, uh, parallel surface sigma sub theta, uh, uh, not constant, uh, we have this factor too. Okay. And this is what uh, uh, people are interested in. And so uh, the reason is that uh, we have uh, two uh, particular instances for which this angular part assumption hold. Uh, one of them is that when B cosine theta uh, is integrable over the unit sphere, uh, this is so often referred to as a class angular cutoff assumption. Uh, if this happens, then it uh, implies A2 because, uh, well, this is, of course, true. And the second part is the most uh, important case. Uh, when this uh, presents a singularity of order nu, where nu is between 0 and 2 uh, for, uh, for the grazing collisions, the uh, uh, theta equals zero in the form where this whole together, B cosine theta, and then uh, this factor uh, behaves about uh, C over theta to the one plus nu power uh, near uh, zero. So that uh, this is not integrable uh, in, in, in L1 S over S to the N minus one. But still, uh, this one, uh, satisfies um, backward this condition here because we, ha we have a sine square uh, term which is about theta over two square term so if you multiply out then then that's uh, finite okay so we're So in dealing with the Cauchy problem one or initial value problem, uh, where many uh, various weak forms have been introduced uh, by many people. And uh, the simplest one is so-called uh, mild form. Uh, this is an integral equation. Fbt is F0b plus zero to the t of this uh, collision term. So you find function f, non-negative function f, satisfying this integral equation. That's called mild, mild equation. And it's obviously weaker than one in the sense that any measure of function solution to one is a solution to nine. You simply just integrate, right? And if F is a mild solution, then you multiply uh, a, a function phi and then uh, integrate over B, then you get this. But uh, for any measure of function phi, so that when the order of integrations in the rest term is interchangeable. Okay. So you got this. And then here, here, uh, when you e evaluate this term, integral QFF times PV, uh, 
Uh, here we use another sort of definition of uh, a collision operator due to Maxwell. And the Maxwell's weak formulation states that this one is given by uh, one of them is, th this is one of them, half of this B times F, F star, P prime plus P star prime minus V minus V star D sigma D V star D V. Okay. So you evaluate this one uh, according to this formula. And that's, um, that's what matters here. And actually, actually, from a rigorous mathematical point of view, this identity is hardly deducible from the explicit pointwise definition of Q except for certain circumstances. Uh, for example, you can check if these three guys are all integrable over the whole space, then uh, you can change the variable B star as B prime B star prime and then interchange these rules, then you can get this, this formula from, from point-wise definition to this uh, uh, function uh, uh, action formula here. But, but in general, it's almost impossible, I think, uh, to deduce this. So actually, so taking it for granted, it should be regarded as another way of defining the collision operator. And uh, you can see uh, Bilani's uh, review paper uh, explains about these historical backgrounds. And, and Maxwell did this uh, much, much earlier than uh, Boltzmann. And then uh, to define uh, suitable weak, uh, weak solutions, uh, we need to introduce a class of test functions uh, and suitably. So here, uh, if phi is a, a twice differential function on Rn, then we write the uh, second derivative matrix as uh, del square phi. Uh, it's uh, nothing but the Hessian matrix of phi evaluate B and denote its uh, matrix norm, matrix norm by this. So you square them and then sum, sum of all ij and then uh, uh, take square root. Right. And and we, we introduce this class, P sub alpha, family of C2 function phi such that uh, this function is um, less than uh, 1 plus b squared to the alpha over 2 power, uh, sort of a uh, what if sort of polynomial growth here. But at the same time, the second derivatives, the matrix norm, is uh, less than 1 plus b squared to the alpha over 2 minus 1. So, uh, so this is nothing but sort of a, some class of smooth functions uh, having a polynomial growth of uh, uh, alpha order, for example. And then uh, uh, as, as it is standard, we denote by L1 to the alpha as the space, uh, this function here. the weighted, usual weighted L1 space. And then uh, we, we, we state uh, the weak forms of our consideration. So under the assumption of our collision at corner B, okay, so and given alpha bigger than two, a uh, non-negative function f is said to be a weak solution to the Boltzmann equation if it satisfies 10 with 11 for every phi. 10 with 11 means the, uh, the weak formulation. Oh. How do I go back? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, here it is. Yes. 10. 
it satisfies this uh, relationship, this equation, for every phi in the class P sub alpha, where, where, where this, uh, where this um, <coughs> integrals or actions of Q over uh, phi is given by Maxwell's formulation. Yeah. Oops, I'm going backward, I'm sorry. Okay. So it satisfies that uh, equation, but also uh, we need some uh, regularity condition, some, some sort of minimal regularity condition. So F belongs to uh, L1 alpha, L1 alpha but also it's bounded in, in t variable between 0 and t when gamma is between minus 2 and 0 and f, f is L1 alpha in a section Lp for some p in, the, in this range uh, when minus and gamma is between minus n and minus 2 and also bounded in, uh, in t variable here. <clears throat> okay. So, well, without this, uh, the class of uh, solution spaces, then this is not well defined actually. So that's why we make this. Right, and about this uh, weak forms, uh, let's let me uh, point out some uh, conservation laws, so called. So it can be shown that this definition is well defined in the sense that that weak 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 formulation of Maxwell's things are finite on the solution spaces described as above. So as a consequence, if F is a weak solution in the above sense then it satisfies automatically the conservation rules. So F integral of F, what it means is <laughs> integral of F is uh, F0B, B, B is here and then as a vector value of things, uh, and then B square is, okay. So uh, the first one is called uh, conservation of mass, and the second one, well actually there are N of them, are called uh, conservation of momentums, and then the third one is called conservation of energy, and which results from the fact that, and phi, well, this, this, these three functions, for example, uh, belongs to P sub alpha, and then uh, they vanish, decide to vanish uh, for here, due to uh, local conservation laws. And then the, about our weak formulation, well, in the case n equals 3, the most important case, physical, uh, physically meaningful case, and then uh, when alpha is 2, and then uh, gamma is between minus 2 and 0, our notions are slight modification of the ones considered by Goudon, T. Goudon, French, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> in 1997, and then Villani uh, at the same year, and so they they showed well, it's slightly different, but they showed that uh, they exist uh, weak solutions in this case. Uh, so, so adopting the same ideas and techniques as in their work it can be shown with minor changes that there exists a weak solution to this Boltzmann equation. In the case, gamma is between minus 2 and 0. Under the additional condition, F belongs to L of L uh, for each t. Well, actually, uh, before, before them, there is a big guy um, called Akir. <laughs> I'm sorry, hard to pronounce. <laughs> 
So actually, uh, this person uh, initiate all the uh, research of this direction, I think. So, well, the, so existence uh, are not, uh, are not uh, a big problem because either cut off or non cut off cases uh, because, uh, because of their work here. Accurate <laughs> Gordon and Villani, and because of three people, you can adopt the same ideas, carry over so called uh, uh, compactness argument uh, in L1 spaces, then uh, it's not very hard. So, what when, when matters? What when matters is that, well, the first one, uh, w what problems and what aims do I have? Well, so in relation with the well definedness, um, the basic question is that uh, because we, we, we said solutions belongs to L1 to the alpha for each time t, uh, how can we estimate this size uh, for each solution uh, in a, a, a priori uh, sense? So, well, well, if gamma is between minus 2 and 0 and n equals 3, although uh, the models are different, we have the same, uh, same uh, situation, uh, almost same situation with uh, Gordon's uh, paper in 1997. Then he showed that there exists a weak solution app, and then that solution satisfies that this size estimate where, where this uh, L1 alpha norm of f uh, is controlled by f0 L1 alpha times exponential of c f0 L1 2 times t here. So exponential growth, but here, here the uh, uh, growth, uh, growth uh, aperture is given by this f0 L1 2 norm. But alpha is between two and four, and and so the question is uh, not for this specific solution he constructed. In general, uh, what can we say about the size a priori, and uh, also can we uh, somehow? Uh, improve this uh, research. So, okay, that's, that's one problem anyway. And the second, second problem is, of course, uniqueness and stability question, and it has been open for uh, quite a long time. And still many uh, parts are open here, so, uh, Fournier, it's not Fourier, I'm sorry, it's in Fournier <laughs> and Garin in uh, quite recently, uh, last year and this year, and used the so-called uh, Wasserstein distance and the method of stochastic process to prove the uniqueness, but in some special cases and then uh, and also when n equals 3. But the, the method is quite, quite unreadable in the sense that if you don't know about stochastic process, then you cannot read. So, well, they tried some uh, constructive analytic way of proving this, but I haven't seen yet their papers. And uh, another uh, important people, uh, uh, Deville, Deville and uh, Muho in quite lately, but I haven't seen their paper yet, but it's on the line, uh, preprint, and they proved the uniqueness for the classical solutions, not, not weak solution, as I mentioned, but under the assumption that F belongs to some, uh, some sublap spaces. So, so that that is still uh, many, many people are doing research and then very difficult, difficult portion here, uh, problem. And then uh, we originally wished to construct some suitable functionals of like, uh, 
Lyapunov type that produced the uniqueness result, but um, it's, <laughs> it's quite difficult uh, and still in progress. Okay. And that's, that's our problem here. Oops. So anyway, uh, let's uh, speak about our main results. So suppose your collision corner takes uh, our assumption here. And then given alpha bigger than 2, suppose that f is a weak solution in the sense of our definition. And then, then there is a non-negative finite functional, lambda, which depending on gamma and f, such that the following estimate hold for all t. So, for instance, if gamma is strictly bigger than minus 2 and less than or equal to 0, then we have this uh, f to the uh, L1 alpha norm is less than, this is al almost the same as uh, um, Gordon's result, but with a slight, slight uh, difference here, F0, only depending on F01. But we have a little bit improvement than his result he, in this sense. We have uh, some nonlinear function here, lambda sub gamma. Okay. And if gamma is minus 2, we have a much better situation. So this happens to a Newtonian potential, for example, in, uh, when n equals 3. Um, is it, is it? Well, anyway, this, uh, this, this norm plus that is given by some, some polynomial growth, but here order is about uh, uh, alpha over 2 minus 1 here. And finally, if gamma is strictly less than minus 2, but bigger than minus n, for example, then you have a similar estimate here in terms of F0 L1 to the alpha. But here we have some F0 1 plus uh, this LP uh, condition here. The, in other words, L infinity uh, L1, uh, L infinity LP norm here times T exponentially here. So, well, for example, there is some corollary still I'm thinking. If, for example, if gamma is between minus 2 and 0, and delta is bigger than 2, then there is an unnamed finite function around the gamma, so that uh, f times exponential of this, some, some big, uh, big weight here, plus that is less than this times initial, initial uh, integrals here. Well, that's nothing but just the summing over. I mean, just, just the summing over this uh, for all alpha, uh, when alpha is, for example, uh, integer, for instance. Summing over this here, we, I can control this. Uh, and then we get that. Oops. That's one. One corollary, and the other corollary is I wish to <laughs> construct some uh, uh, Lyapunov type functionals to prove stability and unique, uniqueness, but quite difficult, still in progress. And so, well, let, uh, the proofs are not difficult, but very depends on sort of estimate. And so, let me just point out some key estimate and then uh, finish this talk. And key estimate is that uh, if phi belongs to this space, we set the, this uh, matrix norm of Hessian matrix times 1 plus b squared to alpha of 2 minus 1. And then uh, the lemma is that if phi belongs to this piece of alpha space without bigger than 2, then on the assumption, uh, there is constant C alpha so that uh, this term, this angular angular part, B cosine theta, V is less than this constant times, we have a, here is a gain of kinetic, 
kinetic uh, part here, B minus B star to the square times 1 plus something like this. And, and, and to prove actually our things, then if P is convex in the sense that its Hessian matrix is positive definite, for instance, then inside the estimate, there, there arises some uh, um, quadratic forms. And using, that, using this condition, we can show there is gamma 1 and gamma 2, and which is bigger than 1 and then less than that. And then this whole thing is given by minus gamma 1 plus gamma 2. And then you, using this relationship and then applying coronavirus, uh, uh, inequalities, then we could prove uh, our uh, estimates. And that's what I have so far. And still, <laughs> the most difficult part is, uh, is just going around and around my ideas, and I, I have no idea yet. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Yes. I can't really a little bit more about the fun uh, functional. 